nice to see you too. Oh, yay, Ken. Woohoo, Ferndale. Hi, Cindy. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, and if you want to put your gender pronouns, that would be great for me. Um, so I'm Heather, she, her. I'm Heather Box. I'm the co-founder of the Million Person Project. And I am the author of the book, How Your Story Sets You Free. And I am really, really excited to be here today to support all of you with your book projects. So thank you so, so much for having the drive to want to write a book. So writing a book is no small feat. And really, one of the most difficult parts about writing a book is declaring that you want to write a book and committing to that vision for yourself and for your life. And I am really, really excited um, that so many people over the course of the last couple of weeks have come on to our Facebook and into our email list and, and all of the different technical avenues and have declared to us that they want to write a book. That is really, really exciting. So I assume that all of you here have, uh, have, has made, have made that declaration of writing a book. And I am here to support you in getting that book project off the ground. So here we go. So today is going to be one hour long and we are going, I'm going to, to pack this full of inspiration of some exercises for you all to do to take to take home with you and do and also for all of you to interact with each other around your books here in the chats so let's get started so today is going to be how to get your book off the ground without spinning your wheels for weeks months years it's basically about how to follow a blueprint to finish your book. And that to me is been the biggest blessing to be able to teach people this because I know from very personal experience, the amount of years and time that we can spin our wheels working on our book. And so I'd like to just start by sharing a little bit about my journey to become an author. Um, and then we'll dive right into the content with all of your book projects. So I've always had the dream of being a writer. Ever since I was little, you know, I was the one that was making the, uh, the book binded, you know, the little book the binded books with the staples and writing short stories. And I recently found my journals from, from when I was little. And it was like, I used to draw the page, um, the cover page and put the, the library code on it. And I made all of my books. I, I always had this dream of being a writer and I always loved writing. And I was, I studied journalism in college and I was really into first person, first person, person journalism. I love to go out to the field and really get to know people and bring their stories back via, via me. But I always like to have my story included. It. I was, you know, I was a, I was, I fancied myself like a gonzo journalist and I wanted to like share my truth in relationship with others. And that was really, really exciting for me. And I, and when I graduated from college in 2003, a lot of the journalism field had totally dried up. And what, 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 when I used to get sent out on these cool stories on, as part of my high school journalism team or my college journalism team, I used to go out and get to like meet new people, interview business owners, talk to people living in the community. And I felt, like it really brought me closer to the people that I was living around. Instead, when I started working as a journalist after college, I was sitting behind the computer, pulling, re pulling research from websites. I was, it was no longer about 
doing in-depth interviews. It was more about just turning over the project and getting it done. And you usually using the internet as your only source. And that sounds like laughable now because that's seriously a large percentage of journalism is now done like that. And it's normal 17 years later, but back then it was just starting to change and I didn't like the way that it was going. And so my writing kind of got put on hold after that. And I became an activist and I was really active in the community working on youth politics and progressive green agenda. And it was, it was a lot of fun, but my writing was on hold. And I started to feel that, to feel that part of my life missing. And I really felt like there was both a creative outlet and an outlet for me to get to know the world through my writing and get to know myself and what it was that I actually believed about anything through my writing. And in 2010, I met an amazing coach. Her name was Ra Goddess. And she helped me to sort of declare that I was a writer. She helped me reconnect to those roots and she's an entrepreneurial soul coach. And she helped me to declare that I was a writer and declare I was a storyteller. And that really was the origins of the Million Person Project. And it was amazing and it was freeing. And I felt like, oh, okay, reconnected with my roots, small hiatus in my twenties from my writing, but I'm ready to, to be a writer now. And you know, I spent a couple of years thinking, okay, what would my um, writing be about? And I, what, if I was going to do a book and, I, but I was constantly publishing Huffington Post, Ms. Magazine, other places. I was out there publishing all the time. But when it came to my book, I was letting everything be very murky. I wasn't sure what the subject would be. I just knew I wanted to write and I, and I had a dream of writing a book, but I never got down to like what it would actually be that I wanted to write and put pen to paper. And so in 2013, I finally decided that I wanted to go a step further, get a book coach and start writing my book. And when I met my book coach, Jay Love, who was amazing, much to my surprise, she, what she said is, hey, Heather, what you really need to do first is write the book proposal. That way, if you write the book proposal, you can clarify what your book is about and be able to move it into partnership with others. You can find editors and agents and people who want to partner on your book. So the rebel, being the rebel that I am, I decided, no, j -Love, I want to write my book first. And basically... I spent from 2013 to 2017 writing my book. So I just want to, to stop here for a minute. And I just want to, to like articulate. I'm not kidding when I say that I meet people every day whose book projects have sort of been in the works and or on hold for over a decade. Like mine was too like 10 years, like I'm not that old. So 10 years is a big portion of my life. 10 years, my, my book project was just kind of in the works. And even after I met Jay Love in 2013, my, my book continued to be in the work, works for a few more years until I finally decided to sit down with her and write my book proposal. And when I wrote my book proposal, it forced me to get crystal clear on what my book was about, why I was writing it, who I was writing it for. You know, I had to incorporate some sample chapters and things like that, that that part was easy. But those answering those other questions for me was hard. As a writer, I just wanted to be creative and I wanted hopefully someone to come down and tap me and say, you're a writer now you get a book deal. And I didn't want to have to go out there and pitch and I didn't know how to do that. So it was just sitting down and writing my book proposal was, was really difficult for me. And 
I realized, you know, once I finally finished my book proposal, you guys, it was three months until I got our book deal with Chronicle Books. Three months after I completed my book proposal, I had a book deal and I was writing a book. And I, you know, I had to kind of not do the thing where I, I think, oh my God, you know, I was 37 when I got my book deal. And I was like, I could have done that at 27 if I would have just sat down and done it. And so since then, I have become incredibly passionate about helping other people sit down and write their book proposals so that they can have their project clearly articulated and they can get help from other people. They can get friends to help edit it. They can hire professional editors, professional book coaches. They can pitch agents. They can pitch publishers. All of those things are possible once you have decided what your book is about. Because let me hear in the chats here, if I asked you right now, hey, what is your, what is your book about? On a, one being, I wouldn't really know how to say that. Um, five being like I could stumble away, stumble through that and say something. And 10 being like, ask me what your book is about and I'll give you a crystal clear pitch. I want to hear from all of you, where are you at in terms of your book? Are you at a one, meaning you're not very clear? Are you, Eva, eight, yes, five, Dina, great. So seven, Kelly, yes. So Angela, seven, Julie, six, yes. I love seeing all these people in here. Lisa, oh, Christina Haas, this is so great to see all of you in here. Contessa, five, great, 7.5, Tarita, woohoo. So, Oh my God, I can't even keep up with all these comments. So we have a lot of people who have done the work to get some clarity around their book, but, and that is awesome to be that clear. And when you go to get a book deal and get your book project off the ground, you want to be a 10. You want to be like, this is what my book is about. And this is the type, this is the title. These are some alternate titles. This is what the book is about. This is who the book is for. These are comparable titles. And you know what? That stuff is like hard to do. It can be really, um, you know, it can be like that for me. It can be the kind of work that kind of takes your energy and you think like, oh, let me go get another cup of tea. Um, I, I can't articulate this perfectly. But if you lovingly, force yourself to sit there and just write something, the level of clarity that comes once you have pen to paper on that stuff, it's like just a draft book proposal can be life-changing. It was for me because when you have that draft articulated of all of that, um, of all of your vision for the book and you're ready to go as an author, uh, and you have that articulated, your plan, that is when people can come in and help you. And that's what I'm going to help you all do today is get a couple of the key pieces to get that clarity articulated today. So great. I love to see these numbers and it's very helpful for me to know where to go in this training. So let me ask one more question. Who is committed to their book being out in the world. One being like, lo I'd love to be an author someday. Five being like, I'm committed, but it might be when I retire. 10 being like, I'm absolutely committed to getting my book out to the world. I want to start pitching publishers this fall. That's a 10. 10, 10, yes. So many times. Oh, I feel like I'm like gambling. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, great. I see some nines. I see some eights. Yes, Tarita, 10, eight, nine. Okay, great. So there's a really high level of motivation here. And one of the things that I have noticed as, as someone who is an author now, and this is where I want to just kind of bring some serious transparency to the process. As an author, 
now, one of the things I'm most passionate about is bringing transparency to the process of publishing. Because one of the biggest obstacles for me and what sort of allowed me to drag my feet for so long on my book project before I was an author was I didn't really understand exactly how it worked. And so I didn't exactly know how to hustle besides just writing the book and like becoming a better writer. And that kind of creative side, I didn't know that the more business side and the hustle of, of, of book writing. And that made it hard for me to kind of envision how I was gonna get to where I'm going. So with all of you right now, I'm just going to quickly share the things I wish that someone would have shared with me back then. So we, um, we got a book deal with Chronicle Books, which is an awesome, amazing, it's the largest West Coast publisher. It's a, considered a major publisher. And we got a book deal with them in um, April of 2018. And the way that we got the book deal was I had written a book proposal for another book, this book, I, that, this book that I was talking about before. I had completed the book proposal process. I, it was complete. It was edited. I had gone to several publishers with that, that book proposal before. And then I was having, I had a client that worked at Chronicle Books. And I work with clients to tell their personal, their truest personal stories publicly, of which many of you know. And what, when I worked with her, I worked with her over the course of six months to really do that story excavation and then articulate her story in a way that could be delivered. And she did it and she did an amazing job. And at the end of our time together, she said to me, what do you think about taking everything we worked on in the last six months and you and Julian turning it into a book for Chronicle about how to tell your personal story. And I was so excited. I was like, I love that idea. And she's like, okay, here's the catch. I'm not the decision maker in this project. So what I need from you, it was like a Tuesday. What I need from you by Friday is a book proposal about this project. And that was the most like music to my ears because I was like, book proposal, I know what that is. And I already wrote one. And so I was able to take the book proposal that I had written before and change out certain parts of it to, to accommodate this book project and get it to them by Friday. And so Julie and I were so excited. And then it wasn't even a full week. They got right back to us and they said, great. We want to partner with you on this book. We want it to be part of a series that we do that we've done here. That's several different authors and called the house series. And we will offer you a $7,500 book deal. And Julian and I knew that we had friends that had gotten $300,000 blockbuster book deals. We had a few friends that were in the 60 to $70,000 range. And we had a lot of friends that were in the like low thousand, 2000 kind of range. So we just sat down and said, what feels right to us? Obviously there's a part of us that would have absolutely done it for free. Um, and we, you know, we're, we're entrepreneurs, we're business people. We wanted to not, we wanted to negotiate and really hold our own in the process. And so we came back and said, what about, $12,500 for the book deal. They came back to us and they countered and said, how about $7,500, our original offer, plus a $2,500 bonus if you get your book in on the timeline that we agreed upon. So they gave us a bonus for being on time, of which of course we got. So we got a $10,000 book deal. And what that meant for us is that essentially when you get a book deal, it's an advance. So generally with a lot of publishers, you, the author earns, it's, it's a complicated process, but to, to simplify it, basically what the author gets is a dollar per, per book a lot of times. And so 
until you pay back the $10,000, meaning until you sell about 10,000 books, you don't start making any royalties. And what I didn't have any idea of at the time was how many books are sold in the, I don't know how many books people sell. Like I know people get bestseller. I know a lot of people get Amazon bestsellers. I know a few people that have New York times bestsellers. You know, my clients have had New York times bestsellers and even a lot of them don't know what how, exactly how many are being sold to get those kind of status. So that was a big, big project of mine was to like, let me get some transparency to this so I can actually, I'm an organizer at heart. I know how to, I, I run campaigns. I know how to get people to do things. Um, you know, I worked in politics for years. What's my target and how do I um, build a campaign to get there? So interviewing lots of people, including our publishers, categorical success. What I have found that for most publishers, categorical success for a first time author who is unknown and categorical success means like, yep, it's a great first project and they'll probably do more projects with you is 10,000 books in the first year. Obviously that's for an unknown first time author. If you already have a TV show or you're a famous soccer player or whatever, those numbers are very different. But if you're just a person that is not a household name, that's the general number. So what does 10,000 books, what is selling 10,000 books in one year sound like to you? Does it sound easy? Does it sound hard? Does it sound doable? Let me hear from all of you what, what that sounds like. So to me, what, you know, doable. Doable. Yes. I love this hard. Yeah. So to me, it felt between hard and doable as somebody who knows who has done a lot of things with numbers. Like I ran an Indiegogo campaign where we raised $35,000 from over 600 donors. You know, I've run, I've run, um, supervisor races and mayoral races in San Francisco where in the districts that we're working in, we're working to get 12,000 votes or 14,000 votes. I know that with teams of people working on this every day, a lot of times it's hard to get into the multiple thousands of things. Um, even when, you know, like we did our Indiegogo campaign, we worked our asses off for that and getting 600 donors was huge, $35,000, huge, but it was a lot of work. So I wasn't, shying away from the fact that that didn't that 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 number I wasn't like 10,000 I got it I was like 10,000 I'm on it and like I get to get some help and really rock this and so where we're currently at before coronavirus so in March which was about seven months into our process, we had 15,000 books ordered. So the publisher basically run, prints the amount of books that they think they're gonna sell. So the first thing they printed was a thousand. We, we blew right through that. Then they printed another 5,000. We blew right through that. Then they printed another 9,000, I think. So that was a total or 8,000, I can't remember, but it was a total of 15,000 for the third edition. So we're on our third print, which is great. And we've really seen, we were at about, we had sold just over, just under 9,000 books around coronavirus. So we are, we, and our, our, our weekly sales plummeted from like 70 or 80 a month on, on Amazon where we can track every week to, you know, two one zero it's building back up now now it's about 30 or 40 but that's because we've been working on getting on podcasts and amazon's deliveries back up and um so yeah so we're we're gonna make our goal i think we did make our goal one year was september 3rd this is the thing about publishing is you don't have the numbers as they come like we don't actually even have q2 numbers 
So we only know what we sold in Q1. Oh no, sorry. We don't even have Q1 numbers. We only know what we sold um, last year in the last quarter of last year. So that it's delayed, which for an organizer is a problem because you want to like keep the hustle up. But we have Amazon numbers so we can kind of like, we know that we're selling about one third of our books on Amazon or we can kind of tell that we figured that out. So we can kind of use that number and just assume that it's representative representative of the other places people are buying. So I think we made our goal. We won't know for a while, but I know we're close enough to get another book deal. And I know we're close enough to say like categorically we're successful for shoppers, which feels great. So that's exciting. And the reason why I share so much and share so much in detail is because that is what helped me realize when I was writing my book proposal, what I needed to aim for. How am I going to sell 10,000 books in the first year? And how am I going to write out a plan? And I, I have a plan here with all of you to show the publisher that I can sell the books. So why does the author need to be responsible for selling the books? Isn't that the job of the publisher? And isn't that the job of the bookstore and all of those people? Yes and no. So most people, especially in this crazy world, I mean, this even before COVID, the book market was changing and book sales were really down and, and there was a, there's a changing way that the consumer works right now. And with COVID that's really exemplified. So what do I mean? I mean, when a lot of people used to get their books by browsing and whoever the publisher chose to put front and center in the bookstores and give, you know, really promote and all the, all the sales agents really promoted. Those were the ones that were really up in, in sales, right? Then people started buying a lot of their books online. And so how do you buy a book online? You see someone else talking about it and you decide to buy it. And usually you see somebody that you know talking about it. And so then you decide to buy it or you hear about it on a podcast or something like that. So the author's platform and their ability to sell their own book and publicize themselves in relationship to the book is incredibly important. If you don't have any way of selling any books yourself, it's gonna be a big lift for the publisher to be able to sell those 10,000 themselves. They're gonna to have to be in love with every aspect of everything about your book and they're gonna to want to make it the blockbuster. But if you have no platform, you're a big, big risk to them. And so you, and each of you have a, a different level of platform, but I'm going to show you how you can bolster your platform and start to build relationships around your book so that when it comes time to pitching to the editor and the publisher, that you're able to show that you have this kind of platform that can contribute to selling three, five, seven thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand books. And you don't want to, um, you don't want to lie. You don't want to make your, if you can't sell those books, you don't want to say that you can, but what you can be doing right now, none of your books are out yet. What you can be doing right now is building the relationships so that when your next book comes out, they're, that you do have those relationships. So let's get into the book proposal because this is where I want to show that until you have a 10 in your clarity to articulate your book project and what it's about and who it's for and why you're doing it, until you have a 10 there, it's going to be hard for you to find your partner in your um, for your publisher and to find your um, your agent and others, and also to build those relationships for people to publicize your book. So one other temperature check I'd love to take from you is who 
where are you at in your book writing process? Have you written the book? Do you have a, so when you're writing the book, you're working on your manuscript. So who has a completed manuscript? That means your book is written. It just needs to be published. Who has a completed manuscript? Who has an idea about what they want their book to be? And they have some writing that they've done in relationship to that idea. Who has lots of writing done and they don't really know how it ties together. They're more like a collection of essays or a collection of writing. And who just has a dream to write a book but hasn't started any of the process yet? And who has a book proposal done? So let's see, oh, so Gmo has an outline, Ken has a collection of essays, Cindy has an idea, some journaling that can become chapters, awesome. Christina has a manuscript, Contessa has lots of writing, Patricia has um, no manuscript, but she's got concepts. Uh, Dina has a self-published book, which I have, I own, um, and an outline for a next one. Kelly Blazer's chapters, outline, lots of writing. Angela, 100 pages. Great. Julie, um, one of several essays written and some notes on others. And RL, idea, some writing, but still rough. Great. So you all are really, sample chapter, you all are really set up to write your book proposal. So let's start writing it right now. And um, okay, so first of all, one of the things is, is I, I do, I do, and Sora, I see that you're throwing ideas around. You have some short essays. I do really want this next 27 minutes to be a point of no return. 27 minutes for you. I want you to feel categorically different about your book and your book project at the end of this session as you, than you do right now. So I want to balance that desire with actually giving you doable assignments that can be done in 27 minutes. So I don't want to tongue tie any of you and send you into a, a you know, anal analysis paralysis um, about what should I say, blah, blah, blah. So I want you to engage in the next 26 minutes. I want you to engage in this as if this is, you're just putting forth your draft ideas, okay? So it doesn't matter. You don't need to say, I'm not really sure or, um, this is a draft. We're just going to assume that everything that's going on from here till the end of the call is draft. So engage with it like you can scratch it out and, and tear it up and redo it if you want. And you can do that in the comments. So let's get the first thing off the plate. Um, that one, you know, what is the title of your book? Let's hear what some of these titles are that you're throwing around for your next book. So I just want to hear from people. Um, notes from crazy Ken. Oh my God, I love it. So, so I want to hear what your sample titles are. Losing my religion, reclaiming my life. Burn your life, landed, full circle, enlighten up. Oh my God, I love this. The Allyship Awareness Handbook. Love this. Let's go. Mixed feelings. Lost ghost stories from the islands of Singapore. Oh, I know it's the middle of the night for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Toshimi and the Magic Happy Coat. Oh my God, I just love this. I'm so curious already about all of these projects. So. Okay, if you don't, if you haven't put your title in yet, um, how to fight fair or dharma of relationships or love across the blockade, befriending dragons, taking new journeys, vivid human, the balancing act, uh, the invisible fear, embracing fear with love. Okay, if you haven't put your title in yet, I just want you to type something in of, it can be, um, you know, 
let's see, like just title it. My book project is about say my book project is about, and then say what your book project is about reclaiming motherhood. Awesome. So my book project is about, I want everybody to do this actually, whether or not you have typed in uh, your title. So if you have typed in your title, do this. My book project titled Reclaiming Motherhood is about, or my book project titled Vivid Human is about, and then I want you to tell me what it's about. Just one or two sentences of specifically what that book is about. So let's hear from from you all, I know you're getting that together. And I want you to put that complete sentence. Um, and I'm just gonna check on over here on the Facebook and make sure that everything's going okay on the other platforms that we're streaming on. Okay, so there we go, Ken, I see you. Okay, um, oh, Victor, Amy, oh good, you guys are over here on Facebook. The title of my book is Every Jungle Needs a King. Victor, yes, the sample title of my book from Amy to Bear, I love that. Let's go, who else do we have in here? And Amy and Victor, if you can just be commenting and encouraging people in, in, in Facebook. Oh, Carolyn Box. My book project is about the ocean adventure and plastic pollution. That's my sister. Yes, I have been waiting for you to write your book and so excited to support you on your book project. I mean, there's so many people in here who I'm so excited to support on this project. And just while you guys are working on this, I just want to tell you a little story of what was happening for me after I got, after I got my book deal. So actually, no. It wasn't after I got my book deal. It was after I declared that I wanted to be an author um, for real, for real. And before I got my book deal. So I was in a leadership program that I lovingly call a cult. You know, one of those like high pressure leadership programs where they, you cry about your family and then you peel back all the layers and you, you undo everything that was done to you in junior high and you declare who you actually are and the freedom that you want to experience and blah, blah, blah. It's amazing. And it's not for everyone. It's very hardcore and I loved it. And when I went through that program uh, a couple years ago before we got our book proposal, I really realized that what had happened to me in my 20s was I kind of thought I used to be so gung ho about being a writer. And in my twenties, I started to think, you know what, maybe I'm not really a writer. Maybe the world doesn't really need my voice. Like who needs another like white lady, blah, blah, blahing about this. Maybe what I have to share isn't really, uh, maybe I should just be kind of more behind the scenes. And really what I was doing was I was justifying my own fear. I was finding really great ways to say, hey, I don't need to have a platform. I'll just help other people do their thing um, from behind the scenes. And I, I sort of let that whole thing go. And then when I got into this leadership program and I was like crying every day about who I actually wanted to be, I really realized that I really do have a desire. My self-expression is like my reason for being. Like when I share what I actually feel in the world and I get to receive somebody else in what they feel in the world, that's what I feel is like my religion. That connection that gets created, that's my purpose for living. And who was I? to forego what I felt I was met, put here to do um, just because I was self-conscious. And so I declared, I wanna be an author in front of 15, 15 people. I wanna be an author, I wanna be an author. I also declared I wanna be a mother for the first time, which was very risky, which felt very risky and I now have a one and a half year old. So I getting in front of those people and just bearing it all and saying all of that what that really, really helped me do was just upgrade like my whole commitment to myself 
and say, okay, this is my life's work. Let me go find proof that it's possible. And I know it's Corona right now, so this isn't really available, um, but maybe with a mask on, you can do it. Something that was so helpful to me that I did almost every single day is I would, after I made that commitment and before I got my book deal, I would walk down my street and I passed a bookstore and I would walk in the bookstore and I would just walk up and down the aisles and I would just look around. I would take Julian with me sometimes. I would just, you know, whoever I was with and I would say, can we walk in here? And I would say, all these people wouldn't be for me. All of these people had the confidence enough to say, I want my book in the world. And they did it. And it felt so doable in those bookstores. It felt really doable surrounded by all of those people who had taken the time to focus their energy and create their book project. And that was a really, really, really transformative. It sounds kind of whatever maybe, but to me it was a super transformative experience. Um, way more than, you know, sitting down with authors and talking to them. Cause once I sat, sat down and talked to them, I'd be like, Oh my God, but they're so much more amazing than me. Or they, you know, they're way more organized or whatever. They, they have bigger platforms, but just being around all the books and being in the gratitude of like how beautiful all the books are. And thank God those people took the time to express themselves. That was really helpful to me. And I want to share that with all of you because I'm so excited about some of these, um, people that I know that I'm seeing in here that are declaring their book projects. And I'm so excited about these new people in here who are sharing things like really, really important work to be done. Like I see Jay, uh, Gmo here, his book, uh, their book project, mixed feelings is about how feelings, um, suck and are confusing, but how you can use them to your advantage to be a happier, more successful person. I mean, come on, that book is needed right now, right? Yes, that book is needed. It's, it's needed for all of us. Kelly Blazer, my book is about evolving through conflict, being in biracial, bilingual, cross-cultural relationship with someone who doesn't think or act or look like you. It's also about the courage and deep curiosity and assuming nothing and showing up authentically and being fully self-expressed. So hello, like that's so needed in the world right now. Like we don't have 10 years to wait for these projects. And I, um, you know, let's see, Christina here. My book is Losing My Religion, Reclaiming My Life. It's about releasing the shame that came from my Catholic beliefs so I could own my power again, specifically using abortion as experience that brought me through the journey. So powerful. And these these books are going to literally change people's lives and open up new understandings for other strangers that are out in the world right now. And, you know, when you get into your book pro proposal and you start thinking, okay, how am I going to send, send 10,000? My experience was once I wrote the book, once I wrote the book and it brought me to my knees and uh, in terms of just feeling so grateful. And I just thought if one person reads this book, if one person decides to tell their, their truth and tell their story because of this book, like it was worth it. Of course it was worth it. Like I got to express myself. I got to work with my partner. We got to meld ideas together. We got to work with amazing editors, Amy Thompson. She's on here. She's one of our editors. We're by Tello, and they helped to infuse the book to be, you know, really grounded in what we truly meant. And then we got to send it out to the world. These stories, if they can change one person's life, isn't that worth doing? And if you do it and you put your book out into the world, it will change one person's life. It will change more than that. I mean, we don't have some blockbuster successful book and we get emails all the time that say, oh my God, I feel like your book gave me permission to do something that I've been wanting to do, knowing I should do my whole life. Oh my God, I, I mean, I just got an email. Oh my God, I've been carrying so much silence around my story and your book literally just pep talked me all the way through it and I'm gonna tell my story. It's amazing. And um, yeah, 
so so that is that's um it's just so amazing i just want you all to know that most of the people that i talk to about their books they don't feel that their book they don't always feel that their book is like critical 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 in this moment but the experience that i have reading what their book is about it's like yes this is so needed look at our world right now it's filled with hate confusion otherness divisiveness it's all of these things uh that you all are writing about are the antidote to that imagine if you're all the voices in this group right now imagine if that was the mainstream you know lisa my book project the invisible fear is about my life experience with anxiety emma phobia and agoraphobia and how it has affected my life and how i was able to transform it with self-love i want my book to help others learn how powerful their love is and how they can connect to their inner healer beautiful and lisa i've worked with you and i know that you're carrying you are carrying part of somebody else's solution your story is is part of somebody else's journey and somebody else's healing and that is so beautiful so thank you all for sharing what your book is about and um if, if you haven't yet shared in the chat i really encourage you to i really encourage you to say um i'm still working on what my book is about but here's a few words that i associate with my writing something like that just let yourself off the hook if you're getting caught up, if you're being a perfectionist or, or, or it's making you feel self-conscious or any of those things. Let yourself just write um, generally what your book is about and be seen in this group, okay? And this is the same over here on Facebook for all of you. Um, I wanna see you all, you know, declaring what, what your book is about and and um, so this is the first step. So now the next step that I want you to take, this is the title of my book and this is what my book is about. Now, and some of you have already started doing this. Now, what I want you to write is the reason why I wanna write this book is, and there is no wrong answers here. So the reason why I wanna write this book it can be the reason I want to write this book is because I've always wanted to be a writer because writing makes me feel like myself. <laughs> that probably would have been my answer um, when I was first working on my book proposal. So the reason why I want to write this book is, and I want to hear from some of you, um, it sounds exciting to be an author because I want to have a bigger platform and impact on other people because I care about blank, blank, and blank. So Cindy, I want to write Befriending Dragons because I can help people who were, are lost in the same way I was. Awesome. I love that Befriending Dragons. Um, beautiful. So let's, let's see who else we've got here. Why you want to write, why you want to write your book. I would love to write because many people have told me they find my essays on Facebook inspirational and they say, I would make a good author. I love to write as well. So Ken, I really love this. And, um, and I would, I know you and I really respect you and I would really encourage you to, to own the fact that you are a great writer. So of course, other people are going to find you inspiring, but what if other people find you, your, um, your, essays threatening or um, intimidating. We can't base our desire to write off of what other people think of us in our writing. We have to write first and foremost for ourselves and our own liberation. We have to write because we believe so strongly in what we're saying and we have a desire to share and be seen in our sharing. So Ken, I, 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 I love that you love to write and Let's start there. I love to write and I, and, and let's work to towards, I believe that I would be a great author because I carry inspiring stories of navigating blank. So Deirdre, the reason I want to write this book is that there are so many stories. There are so many stories that were almost fictional 
there are just so many stories. Yeah. So story. So so let's hear stories about what what what. Um, wow, Vanessa, I want to write because someone told me I can. Wow, that's interesting. And so why do you want to write for you? What does it mean to you to be able to 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 do it, even though other people tell you you can't? So. Oh, Camille, I love this. I love writing and I want to bring awareness of how hardships can pave the way to optimal wellness. Beautiful, Cam. I love that. And I, I'm really, I'm really intrigued and want to know more and want to support you in getting your vision articulated for, for what your book is going to be. And Sora, I see here, the reason I want to write this book is to empower those who have lived with disability disfigurement to be more proudly visible to question why it's hard for our society to accept difference and to be a practical guide for creating a kinder, more equitable world. Come on, Sora. It's so, it's so beautifully articulated. And I'm so glad you came on today's session to, to be able to articulate that because I, I feel like let's let these reasons be our guiding light. Let's write this and print it and set it on our computer or right there on our desk. And so when you sit down to write and you start to think, oh, I don't want to write all this. I don't think my platform is big enough. You can read this and you can say, Angela, I want female survivors in armed conflict to feel empowered to tell their stories. And because I want to shed a light on how many people, especially man, men, can be supportive allies. Come on. That is so important. Let's write that out. Let's write that out, fold it up on a little piece of paper, or put it in a little frame and have that on your desk so that every time you sit down and you meet some kind of internal obstacle about your yourself and like, oh, did I really write a book? Did I really just declare on Facebook that I wanted to write a book? Like, do I have the discipline to do it? This this is all of my, my actual internal dialogue. Um, you know, my internal dialogue is, oh, I can't spell. I, I, every time I send an email blast out, people write me back and say, oh my God, there's so many typos. Like Heather, spell check. I'm like, I spell checked and I reread it like 10 times. I don't see typos. Like who am I to think of that I want to be an author? Like, um, you know, all kinds of insecurities that come up for me about not being smart enough or organized enough to write a book. And yo, I did it. And I did it fast and I did it well. And I, and I reached categorical success and we were the Amazon best new release in public speaking for 30 days straight and yada, yada, yada. Like I can sound like one of those people that really did it because I am, <laughs> but it's still even hard for me to believe that sometimes. Um, and so I want you to be guided by your reason. So so I see Julie here. The, the reason I want to write this book is because it's long past time for white people to take accountability for the privilege they inherited by the mistreatment of BIPOC. Yes. Oh my God. And how important is that? And so I, that is a, if that's not a call to action for yourself to sit down and write the book, I don't know what is. So, um, so I, I see so many great things coming in here and then, also streaming over here on on Facebook, um, I see them too. And I I just want to say congratulations to all of you for declaring your book project and also for getting in touch with the reason why you want to do it. So here's the thing: you all made it almost an hour with me um, over here working on your book projects, declaring your book project. I want to support you all by giving you a gift um, or sharing what I would share with my friends, which is that I want to share our book proposal with all of you that was accepted to Chronicle Books. This is something else that I also desperately wished that I would have had um, was like successful templates to really base my writing off of. And our book proposal that we turned into Chronicle is very short. It was for a short book. So there are more components to other book proposals, but I just want you to see what one successful um, book proposal is like. So if you want that book proposal, just 
put your, um, just raise your hand in this, in this chat here, say, I want your book proposal. I want, raise your hand or I, yeah, oh, you guys all know how to use it. Great. So, oh, good. I see lots of people raising their hands over here. I see people saying they want it. Great. I want your book proposal. I want to give it to you. Um, and what I want you to do, the homework, the reason why, I, the, the way that I want this to be a point of no return hour for you is I want you to take a piece of paper and I want you to write your title. I want you to write, my book is about, and then I want you to write, the reason I want to write this book is, and I want you to write those th three things down or print them out, and I want you to have them with you. And then I want you to take our book proposal that you're going to get, um, and then I want you to sit down with our book proposal, read it, and the entire time you're reading it, I just want you to think, I could do this. I could do this. I can do that section by section. And then I want you to look back over at your title and your reason you want to write it. And I want you to start sitting down and just writing your book proposal section by section. And then that once you have that done, then you can really, really um, start to go out to the world to find the editors and the publishers that you want to work with, the agents, and pitch your project. You can also be way, way, and this is really, really important. What most people do is they underestimate their personal connections. So they don't tell their friends, they don't tell their family that they want to write a book, and they don't realize that somebody knows somebody through work that wrote a book and that would love to sit down and have coffee with you. And you're going to be ready with your book proposal. When you get the random coffee date with an author that's going to make the introduction to their editor for you, you're going to be ready. And your book proposal is a big part of that. And so on that note, I also want to invite you all. We have been, you know, as many of you know, we run the Million Person Project and we mostly do these very intensive six month deep dives with people around their story. But during coronavirus, we have been trying to provide value to people um, in shorter bursts because we know the world is uncertain, um, the sky is orange, the fires, COVID, there's so many things to, um, to navigate that the longer term commitments, we're just trying to give people kind of bursts of energy and bursts of resources to complete their projects. And so on September 19th and September 20th, we are offering a write your book proposal retreat. It's going to be virtual, of course. And what we're going to do is much like the class today, we are going to, you know, get, give 20 minute pep talk, 10 minute description of what you're doing, and then your worksheet. Then you're going to get off, you're going to, you know, turn your video off for a second, and you're going to work on the worksheet, and then you're going to submit it back to us. And what we're going to do over the course of the weekend is section by section, bit by bit, we are going to build your book proposal. And by the end of the day on Sunday, it's Saturday from 9 a.m. Pacific to 3 p.m. Pacific, Saturday, um, Saturday and Sunday. By, the, by Sunday at 3 p.m., you are going to have all of the draft components of your book proposal written so that you can sit down and put it all together and start actually getting it out to publishers. That is on September 19th and September 20th. So it's not this weekend, it's the next one. And our cost for this workshop is $497. And you all um, can join today to do it. And if you all join today from people from this, this presentation, if you join by the end of today, so like nine o'clock tonight, let's say, if, you, if I see someone that pops up by nine o'clock tonight, I'll know that they're part of this. And what we'll do is we will have our coaches get on a call with you for, for the, in the lead up. So this next week, we'll get on a call with you and we will do a your book project audit. We will basically help you to think through your, which parts of your book project you have and which ones you need so that you can come into the weekend on the 19th and the 20th fully ready to just sit down we're going to do, you know, we'll get you in the mood, we'll fire you up, we'll do meditation, we'll 
we'll, um, we'll, we'll pep talk you, we'll set deadlines, we'll do all of the things that we have found have been really supportive to our clients in getting their book projects done. And um, Amy can put the link right here in our, in our, in the Zoom and hopefully in the, in the Facebook to, to the actual class so that you can just sign up right now. And the, the, the reason why I'm so passionate about this is because look, there is a lot going on right now in the world. There is so much going on in the world and there is so many things asking for your attention, distract you, uh, rabbit holes to go down. What I really believe, and sometimes it feels uh, sometimes I, I can't hold on to it, but what I believe in my soul is that what we need to be doing right now is we need to be keeping our vibration high. We need to be keeping our energy up. We, need, we, we cannot succumb to the feelings of otherness and divisiveness right now. What we need right now is to be able to elevate how we're feeling about ourselves and each other and to be able to be generative in this time, peaceful and generative. And I feel like the book proposal process, writing your book proposal will make you feel so generative. And it's also a gift to the whole world that you are declaring that you will be you out loud. And that's what I live for is to support people in being all of who they are out loud because God knows our time and whatever I mean by God, I don't even know, but our time on this planet is not a given. And if we want to write a book project, I'm working on my book project right now too. I'm going to be working on it on the weekend with you. So is Amy. And when I know that my time isn't limit, my time here isn't a given on planet earth and that it's limited and that I get to do the projects I want to do now. I'm not going to ever wait another 10 years to do, to do these things, things that are really meaningful to me. No. What if I never got that? I, what if I would have never got that? That was such a huge, it's a huge, meaningful experience for me to be a published author. It was a huge, meaningful experience to go on book tour with my partner and our baby. I loved every second of it. And I want that for all of you. I want you all to make your dreams come true because I know how freeing that can be for you. I also know how important that is for the rest of the world and the people in it to get to be blessed with your wisdom. So I am rooting for you. I hope you join our book proposal class. I also hope that you do the homework from this class and, and, and write your paper with, with your, three, your three things about your book and then also step by step um, look at our book proposal and I'm really rooting for you all. I, I love you all. I'm so hot because I'm so pumped and I just respect them, the courage that it takes to get on to an event like this and declare that you're writing a book and becoming an author and yeah, much love to all of you. Good to meet you. Good to see old friends on here and let's do this. All right, bye.